Look what I found, dear ones. It's a, a little tiny bird's egg, and it's pale blue. I wonder what kind of bird's egg this could be. Is it a robin's egg? I'll find out. Light as air. And that baby robin, or whatever kind of bird it is, is around here somewhere, I'll bet. Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. My new nickname, I Am of the Stars. That could be my first name, I Am. And maybe my last name could be Of the Stars. <sighs> it's a nice feeling saying words like that, you know. <laughs> I thought I'd explain a little about a topic that I've been mulling over for many years now and that I've touched on in the past from time to time. And it's a little bit of a difficult topic because people see it in different ways. Um, the other d day I spoke about uh, the demon world in terms of the, uh, as if it were the shadow aspect of our being. And um, I think in the main that's true. Uh, and on the other hand, in, uh, in humankind, we have a myth, the myth of the fallen angels. And um, I'd like to, and I, I spoke in, in a previous blog about that, is something that is much more rare here on earth than the shadow side of our own um, soul that we are reconciling and bringing into the light right now. So uh, today, instead of talking about the shadow side of our own soul, I thought I'd talk a little about the fallen angels and just some pull together some strands of information that I have on that topic. And I'm not promising you that I will be 100% accurate on this. I'm just offering the beginning of a direction of a, like an investigation or inquiry into this. And uh, you can probably find out quite a bit in your Bible as well because I found all kinds of information about Satan in the Bible, and I think I posted that in a prior blog, the qualities of, of Satan. Yeah. And um, so, talking a little bit about what in the Christian Bible is termed Satan, or in some uh, myths is called the fallen angels, all right? Not so much from their point of view, but from our point of view and how, how we might... Um, assert ourselves in relation to them. <laughs> so, you can probably tell I'm not totally looking forward to talking about it. <laughs> so, it says in the book of Ra, the Law of One, it mentions in there two beings. Uh, you know, Venus ascended Oh, a long time ago, long before the fall of Earth, which happened about 120,000 years ago, before the fall of Earth to a lower dimension from the beautiful star that, uh, the energy that she had to the lower energy of the third and fourth dimension. Uh, long, long before that, I forget, was it billions of years, a long time before that, was the ascension of the planet Venus. And the inhabitants, according to the Law of One, the inhabitants of that planet, they learned their soul lessons through, through love. And uh, so they perfected their souls learning through love. And, um, and, but however, and so it, it was what you would call the, um, the beautiful pink or... Um, emerald energy of the heart that they perfected, right? And the ascension happened over there for, for the people on Venus, the beings on Venus. And uh, they had what they call a pretty good harvest. So um, for them, that meant that some r relatively small percentage of those people there ascended. And there were quite a few who did not. And... Um, so those souls remained for further per perfection. And um, uh, 
In addition, on that world were two beings who perfected their um, perfected their understanding of their souls through uh, through the wi the willpower, through the center of control, and the, through the color orange. Okay, so these two beings. Um, reading between the lines, I think that they began a religious war uh, on Venus that ended the uh, lives of the, of the people there who had not ascended. Now what happened then to those souls? I'm not sure because souls flock and go in flocks from one situation to the lear next learning situation. They may have come to Earth and those two orange souls may have also come to Earth. So here on Earth, there are so, 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 so much later, there are so many different souls, different kinds of souls are here. And so I'd like to just concentrate a little um, on what you might call the orange energy here today, which is clearing in batches and droves and massive amounts from Earth right now. Uh, in the early days, uh, of my understanding of the feeling of the ascension about 17 years ago uh, I could sense uh, the beings of the Satan world um, operating uh, uh, especially in the large cities and I could sometimes see them with clear vision and the vision that I had was like very dark and fiery red either very black and, or very dark brown and fiery red. And the feeling that I got from them was very much the turning of the, of the chakras to hatred and to distortion of energy and like that. And so they were pretty, um, and they were very doubled up on people, like there could be nine working on one person's soul field in one night. So, uh, and so they had some concerns at that time about what would become of them on ascension. Now, uh, I have no idea, you know, all this is in the hands of God. The difficulty being that those kinds of beings, such as what is termed uh, the orange entities from Venus or the Satan world or the fallen angels, those, those beings have turned away from the great power and wisdom and love of God and, and turned towards the the power of their own um, power center, the third chakra, in our in our um, human species, and and so the power that they get because they are not accessing the infinite power of God um, has to come from other beings. So so there's a problem there, and that problem is that they desire power. And so they must um, take power from other beings, such as us. <laughs> and we don't like that. We don't want them to do that, see. It's the kind of thing where the logic short circuits itself. So from their point of view, they can't understand why we don't want to be dominated. <laughs> and we, from our point of view, can't figure out how they should think we would like to be. <laughs> So it's possible that that the souls from Venus, uh, both the the wanderers, the um, service to self, two orange entities uh, that that were harvested there, and also possibly some portion of the souls that that weren't harvested on Venus or maybe all of them, might have come to Earth. And, um, and so the latter category may have manifested as 3D, 4D uh, children on Earth. And uh, some of them may be spiritual adepts. Uh, possibly also the, the two orange entities from Venus could be considered spiritual adepts. And... Uh, they are what, um, if that's true, uh, they are what are manifesting on the astral plane right now. 
I don't know what became of the demon realm, um, the Satan world and all that stuff. It just doesn't seem to be there anymore. No, what's manifesting right now is really very different. Um, they, lo they look like people. They're in the shape of people, but uh, they as to whether they are like the astral form of traveling astral form of people on earth or whether they are people in astral form who exist in astral form I don't know enough about it to be able to say <laughs> now years ago when I was driving across um, across the eastern reaches of California I encountered um, a whole flock of beings who called themselves Enra. Uh, they were fourth dimensional beings and they their beingness was was wisdom, was the effort that they had, more like Alpha Centauri, their beings, their beingness was wisdom. They were uh, what is called in Ra, um, the book of Ra, um, is it a, a mental, emotional, mental, emotional, spiritual complex or spiritual, emotional, mental complex, uh, meaning that uh, of uh, or gathering of, of, of those sorts of beings uh, into a specific like um, uh, flocking of souls or uh, it's hard to explain in the fourth dimension. Um, but apparently there are like vast batches of souls that flock together in the fourth dimension. Some, uh, some like these en ra en or en ra, um, are, are, are really very interesting entities. They, they just, if you could imagine the Theosophical Society uh, suddenly segueing, segueing into the fourth dimension and, and having you know, billion extra years of soul learning experience, then they might become something like Ra N. Um, Ra N is just a, a very copacetico utopian group, you know. Compared now, let's compare them to these these folks that are that are hanging out in the fourth, mid fourth, mid fourth dimension, the mid astral plane right now. They seem like people. They're shaped like people. They're eminently logical, highly persuasive, diplomatic, <laughs> intent on their own purpose. And that purpose is to, to dominate and control humans. Okay, so for them, and here we are, fledglings, fledglings of God, coming into the flowering open awareness of the, the, the glory of God, right? The wonders of aligning with God. And, and we're full of trepidation. It's as if we were in an egg, a little sparrow's egg that is, and we've been trying to get out. We've been pecking. You know how little birds do? They peck to get out of the egg. You know, first their nose and like their beak comes out and, and then they stop, they're tired in, in there. <laughs> and they start up again. And finally, by hook or by crook, they get themselves out of the egg and they're like really exhausted. So they just lie there for a minute or two, breathing rapidly, you know. It's, it makes you want to pick them up and take care of them. It's so, so cute. We're like that right now. We're in a position of relative vulnerability. Before our eyes are quite open, tired out from the struggle to emerge from our shell, suddenly shellless, right? And just at the point of looking up and finding what you might call the mama hen waiting to take care of us. This is the wonderful love of God waiting for us, waiting for us to relate to it, right? Okay, so at that moment, at this moment now, what is happening is that these other beings, which have a different sort of orientation from us, they're, um, they're, it's really a funny little play. They're scooping around on the astral plane and they see us and they see like a bunch of equipment 
that we don't know how to operate yet. Just like a baby chicken doesn't really know how to flap its wings. It hasn't grown its feathers yet, right? It's just waiting around for a chance to grow up, right? And, and, and the baby, the very, very tiny baby chicken just out of the egg, it's just learning how to open its eyes and, and sit up straight, right? And, and we're like that too. And then it's going, and these beings are going, they're coming around in droves, very, very suave, very sophisticated, very intent on their own purpose, saying, you're really here for us to direct. You're really here for us to explain things to, you know. We'll explain all about what you should do. <laughs> and, and so they're saying, just let me get into your cockpit. Like, let me, what it feels like is that they settle down one of them will settle down into the astral body like a v-shaped settling into the astral body and think that it's like manning the cockpit <laughs> maybe they've been doing this all along without us knowing about it but and and they are superior intellectually right so what are we going to relate to while we're lying there in that relatively helpless state Maybe some little little flies might come around, uh, just buzzing around near our heads. And uh, so we open our eyes, right? And we see these little flies, and they're, they're saying to us, I, I'm the one who should control what you do. I'm the one who should tell you what to do. And, and you're just wondering what's up, right? And then your mama comes around, your mama hands are the most possessive and defensive little even though they're they're pretty small and defenseless themselves they can be very very um, um, uh, helpful to their babies they can be very fierce when it when it's a matter of helping out their babies and so the mama hen comes around and she looks at these little flies and she just kind of settles herself over the baby and and keeps it warm and fluffs up her feathers and like that. And then the baby chicken knows it's not those little flies that are the ones. It's the mama hen. It's all the love of, of, of the mother. So, so now I like to say to you, if you experience this, all you have to say is, I align my mind and heart and will with that of God. And then they have to leave. You can say remove the or disengage the the group um, program sub program, and then they have to leave. All right, because what has happened is as as Earth has descended into this third and fourth dimension, our uh, our um, etheric nets have like taken on some distortions, some some like fold infoldings and like wrinkles and convolutions that have allowed them to to make adjustments in our hologrammatic programming that accommodates their energy all right so in that and and uh and we are all unaware of that okay so um i i say the first thing to know is to relate to one's own power uh power of god the power of god within us uh, now, they might put up quite a fuss about how this leaves them homeless, but um, I say, and uh, they might also say that it's for our own good that they're there, okay? I could go on for a long time about that notion that something that hurts us is for our own good, but I won't do that today. <laughs> I would only say, that if it hurts us, it is never for our own good. What opens our heart and heals our, our soul wounding, that is for our own good. Okay. So, so now, when our hearts are open, we may say to ourselves, what will become of these beings? That's not really up to us. That is up to God. Okay, their soul evolution is, is proceeding so differently from ours that the answers lie with God and not with us. Only one argument that I found persuasive in this case 
is to say that the the central power switch for their beingness is located in their heart and this is true okay whether they will choose to switch it their hearts on or not switch it on is completely up to them and there will be a place for them in the in the evolution of many souls if they delay indefinitely for the um, the helpfulness in God's plan of the fallen angels and the Satan world and the, the orange beings is uh, to, uh, to test us, constantly test us, until we develop our own willpower and our own understanding of our magnificence. See, until we get the notion, like like a little baby chicken, just lying there doesn't know all the many things it can really do. He doesn't know how to walk. He doesn't know how to eat. It doesn't know it has a mom. It doesn't know it can even open its eyes. It's just lying there, kind of really exhausted, sound, just just breathing deeply and glad that it's out of the shell, you know. And that's us. We have a lot to learn. <laughs> and so, when they come around, what they're really teaching us is whether we will relate to the God in us or whether we will relate to our own, like, mental minds, our own ego, and our own willpower. Which is the thing that we will choose? Which is the thing that will, that will open up the true greatness in our souls? Long-winded. Sorry about that. You all take care. Lots of love.